E-A-B-L-E-S, Ebels. If you don't remember that name yet, we'll write it down because you're going to want to make sure you go back to briannicholshow.com forward slash Ebels and learn more about this amazing story with Meredith and Addison. It starts out, Meredith was searching for something natural to help manage her chronic migraines. They tried it all, OTC meds, hydration, essential oils, and even some other CBD brands. And with CBD, Meredith finally had her pain managed and no longer lived a life dictated by migraines. Addison knew right away that he had to find a way to bring it to market. And with that, Ebels was born, and Addison hopes it does for you what it has done for his wife, what it has done for many others, including yours truly, help you manage a life full of pain. Life's a storm, and whether the clouds are pain, anxiety, inflammation, or trouble sleeping, we're almost certain this will help. All right, with that being said, on to the show. Instead of focusing on winning arguments, we're teaching the basic fundamentals of sales and marketing and how we can use them to win in the world of politics, teaching you how to meet people where they're at on the issues they care about. Welcome to The Brian Nichols Show. Well, happy Wednesday, my dudes. It's Brian Nichols here on The Brian Nichols Show. Thank you for joining us on, of course, another fun-filled episode. I am, as always, your humble host, and today, you and me, one-on-one, I'm looking forward to this conversation, I hope. You are as well. And uh, yeah, by the way, please go ahead and check out our amazing sponsor. And that is Ebels, E-A-B-L-E-S, Ebels. I cannot recommend them enough. And also, I cannot recommend enough today's sponsor. And that is the Expat Money Show. Head over to briannicholshow.com forward slash expat, where you'll join our good friend, Mikel Thorpe, and his amazing group of experts to learn how you can protect the money you worked so hard to earn from those ambulance chasing lawyers, nefarious creditors, and greedy unjust governments. And also you'll be able to sign up for the free virtual summit taking place November 7th through November 11th, five days, 30 expert speakers and one keynote speaker. Yeah. The one, the only Ron Paul. So head over to briannicholshow.com forward slash expat, because not only can you grab your free tickets there, but you will also check out the expat money show where you'll figure out how Mikkel Thorpe's helped people just like you invest internationally, secure second passports and residencies, eliminate your tax bill and take advantage of offshore structures. So you can travel the world freely and never have to worry about money again. One more time, briannicholshow.com forward slash expat. All right, folks. Well, thank you for joining us on today's episode of the Brian Nichols Show. Looking forward to this conversation. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun one because Joe Biden, uh uh-oh, he's at 33% approval rating. And uh, here's a newsflash. Majority of Democrats don't want Joe Biden to run for re-election. Now, that actually struck me like shocking when you think, wow, a majority of Democrats don't want their sitting uh, president to actually run for re-election in 2024. Well, there's a New York Times uh, piece that was just uh, put out here. I'm going to go ahead and share. This is from Fox and Friends uh, of all places. I know Fox and Friends. Go ahead and uh, really quick, take a listen. Oh, just kidding. Not that. That's Mikhail Thorpe. <laughs> Try one more time. There we go. Meantime, Joe, there's also this New York Times once again suggesting in a new article that, quote, at 79 years of age, President Biden is testing the boundaries of age and the presidency. Your reaction, Joe? Mm. (laughs) Really, really quick. We're going to pause right there for a second because, oh, man, I mean, at age 79, Biden is testing the boundaries of president of the age and the presidency. And this is the quote for those of you who are joining us in the audio version. He often shuffles when he walks and aides worry he will trip on a wire. He stumbles over his words during public events, dot, dot, dot. I mean, if it's not like how all of us have ever treated our grandparents, our great grandparents, you know, nanny's coming over for for Thanksgiving. You're like, okay, we got to help nanny in. And everybody goes out and they're like, okay, we're going to, you know, help nanny in, make sure you move everything out of the way, get the chair ready. I feel that's how the aides approach Joe Biden because- I mean, he, he, if we're going to be frank, he's older than many of our grandparents uh, at this point. So, yeah, it's, it is funny. That's the, the exact way it starts out. Joe Biden's coming over for Thanksgiving dinner. Following, following this correctly, a year and a half ago, it was perfectly fine for Joe Biden to run for president because the New York Times endorsed him like they've endorsed every Democratic presidential candidate since 1956. But now, only now, 18 months later, he's too old to be there. Uh, look, there is clearly a campaign being run by Democrats and going to their allies in the New York Times to persuade Mr. Biden not to run based on his poll numbers, which are horrific. When you're in the 20s in polling, 20s on inflation, on the economy, on 
your handling of the border or your handling of gas prices, of course you're going to not want this guy to run again because it, it's a losing proposition. And I'm going to pause really quick there because what did he just focus on? Joe Concha there, by the way, Fox News contributor. Um, he's talking about the things that we talk about here in the program. It's the idea of meeting people where they're at on the issues they care about. He just hit the top of mind issues that are impacting people right now. Inflation, gas prices, uh, you're seeing rising costs literally everywhere. Cost of living is going through the roof. And then he added on, especially if you're in a border state, immigration. And, and I know for a lot of us who aren't in those border states, it's not as real of a conversation. But we had our, our, our friend there from Texas on the program a couple of weeks back talking about why Texas, uh, Texas is considering uh, seceding from the union. And one of those things brought up was the immigration conversation. Yeah. Daniel Miller brought that up. Immigration is one of the things that is pushing Texas to consider taking a step away because the federal government's not enforcing it. So yes, these are very much so top of mind issues that not only is the president ignoring and his administration ignoring, but frankly, they're gaslighting uh, many, uh, many folks, including many members of his own base. I'll let Joe continue. I don't think it's about age. For, for Joe Biden, his whole life, he has been profoundly dishonest and incompetent. And he failed his way up to the presidency somehow, uh, despite uh, this whole resume. Uh, so th th this is what's going on now at this point, Todd. Uh, it it's Democrats uh, begging Mr. Biden not to run. The problem is there's no one really behind him on the bench to fill that gap, unless you consider, you know, Gavin Newsom or or, or uh, Hillary Clinton to, to fill in that gap, uh, you know, a Gavin Newsom who runs California, uh, that would be one heck of a bumper sticker, right? Mm -hmm. I'll turn America what I've turned into California. No, that's not good. And Hillary Clinton, she's only run for president twice and lost. So th that's your options at this point, and they ain't good, Todd. Well, here Sorry. is Kamala Harris. And I'm going to pause really quick there because. I, and I, I am going to carry this part of the conversation forward a little bit more and we dig into the analysis because there is a part two to this. But Joe mentions two people here that could be the alternatives to Joe Biden. And that is uh, he mentions first Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, and then Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton, who, yes, has run twice now for president and lost each time first to a an up and coming young junior senator from Illinois named Barack Obama. The other being uh, one Donald John or yeah, Donald John Trump in 2016. Oh, and by the way, she was also uh, almost foiled at the onset from a an upstart uh, octogenarian socialist named Bernie Sanders from Vermont. So uh, Hillary Clinton has had no real easy path to the presidency. And frankly, I don't see it really being an easy path to the presidency, even if she were to run in 2024 as the Democratic nominee. And oh, by the way, she would also be pushing 80 herself. So it doesn't really help solve the age issue that much from the Democrats. And Pete Buttigieg on 2024. Listen to this. Listen to President Biden. He intends to run. And if he does, I intend to run with him. Oh, my God. She nods her head. She has to nod her head like, yeah, I'm, I'm a hostage video. Yes. Yes, I will support Joe Biden if he runs. And she has the fake smile. Kamala Harris, I mean, if there is one person who can make Hillary Clinton seem likable, it's Kamala Harris. It truly astonishes me at how just bad she is at this. It's not a matter of her simply being uncharismatic or not knowing how to present herself in front of a camera. She's just bad at this. She does not come across sincere. She just comes across dripping with narcissism and, and like almost like a sociopath. And you can feel anytime she says anything that's supposed to be like of, of like emotional sentiment, it comes across so ingenuine, but I'm sorry. We'll let Kamala continue. Yeah. Yes, I do expect him to run. I'll support him. And let me tell you why he's going to have a lot to be proud of. And of course, they have to say that. Is anybody believing it? Boy, that was really persuasive, you know, when, 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 you, when you play it back uh, that way, right? It's such such vigor behind those words. Now, don't believe it. And Buttigieg, I, I should have bought up, uh, him as well. Uh, he's uh, the candidate that donors want to run most. But when you look at the supply chain, if that's the, the number one thing in your resume and his handling of it, uh, again, no good options, Carly. Mm -hmm. Got no it. good options, at least for now. No good options. Really, there, there are no good options. And I guess that leads to the question. What are Democrats going to do? And uh, we're going to go to another article here. This was from The Hill. Uh, and this was five. Here, let me go ahead and share this screen. All right. So we're going to go ahead and check out. Yeah, we go. So we're going to check out this uh, from The Hill. And from The Hill, they're saying five under the radar Democrats 
who could run for president in 2024. Now, they're they're basically reiterating the same thing that we just saw here. Yeah, Joe Biden, he's not doing too hot for uh, for his 2024 prospects. And uh, here's who they bring up beyond, as we just heard there, uh, Vice President Harris, Pete Buttigieg. Oh, and they also bring up Elizabeth uh, Warren and Bernie Sanders, who were also 2020 um, afterthoughts. I don't believe that they would really do too hot if they were to run again in 2024. Prove me wrong. I mean, Bernie Sanders also will be a thousand years old. Elizabeth Warren, uh, she's the only person who could think that'd be even more smarmy and off-putting than Kamala Harris regards to in, uh, in comparison to Hillary Clinton. So here's who else uh, the Democrats are, are possibly considering. Uh, one, Senator Sherrod Brown. They say the popular Ohio senator's name uh, comes up readily each time Democrats are looking for a candidate who isn't one of the main contenders like Harris or Buttigieg. Why? Well, his appeals to both progressive and moderates in much in the much uh, coveted traditional swing state that has been important to both parties. So you can see right there, they're looking for somebody who is going to be traditionalist. Uh, it, will he be? Um, if you can appeal to both progressives and to moderates, are you really going to be appealing to your average American? That's a good question. Um, Stacey Abrams, the uh, governor from, Calif uh, from California, from uh, Georgia. Uh, no, she is not the governor from Georgia. She thinks she's the governor from Georgia, but apparently she also thinks she can be president of the United States. And uh, that not winning uh, election in, in Georgia will lead her to potentially being a, uh, a leading name, I guess, in 2024, according to the Democrats here. I doubt that. Uh, Representative Ro Khanna from California. Again, uh, Ro Khanna, he is, and they say here again, one of the most overtly progressive candidates here on the list. Uh, he was a former co-chair of uh, Bernie Sanders' campaign. And then you look at Ro Khanna, though, I just, again, with the whole Gavin Newsom, I don't see taking the California win and, and bringing it over to uh, bring it over to the the uh, the nation. I just don't see that being a, a real winning argument. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. I mean, she's right up there with Phil Murphy, Andrew Cuomo, Tom Wolf as some of the worst governors in America over the past two years with the covid pandemic uh, locking down Michigan. Remember, she had her grocery stores completely uh, locked up with the different aisles because they were non-essential items. So again, I don't see her. And then Mitch Landrew, uh, former New Orleans mayor, who I, I don't know how they even consider him to be an alternative because he ended up uh, pretty much leaving uh, Louisiana there back at the end of uh, his term and really hasn't been too much of a name ever since. So uh, with that being said, I don't see any of these names being really uh, top contenders either. So it goes to the main question, and that is to, well, obviously, this audience, what do libertarians do? What do we do? Fingers crossed we present ourselves with a good candidate who can present our ideas not just to the masses in terms of the principle and the ideas and how they impact your average person, but also bringing these ideas and effectively messaging them to people who are maybe open to the ideas of liberty but haven't really considered these ideas too much or in all uh, seriousness. And we look at any time you have a presidential election, this is when the spotlight is shined on us. Now, we're not trying to, to cast any stones at former candidates, but we've definitely seen in our past two candidates, the ideas of being a libertarian didn't make it as much to the stage as just being the libertarian, being the third choice did. And I think that is where we really need to, to set the bar higher, especially with the candidates that we should be looking at as a, the crop of candidates going to 2024. I know amongst them, Spike Cohen, Dave Smith, Justin Amash, Larry Sharp, and a slew of other candidates who have potentially raised their names up for the libertarians. It shouldn't be difficult. It really shouldn't. When you're looking at just ancient Joe Biden and the Democrats not being able to bring literally anybody to the table, and then on the flip side, it's probably going to be either for the Republicans, Donald Trump again, or Ron DeSantis. And with that, okay, we're libertarians. If it's Trump versus Biden again, what more of an opportunity would we need versus Trump versus Hillary? I mean, yeah, Trump should win versus Biden. But when you look at the polls, actually, that's the one candidate that Biden beats. So libertarians, I challenge you not only to bring a candidate that's going to be able to effectively message your ideas to the masses, but we have to be able to meet people where they're at on the issues they care about, not just talk about the things that it means to be a libertarian, but let's talk about the things that mean to be a libertarian that matter most important right now. Inflation, cost of living, I know we're leading a big charge about talking about foreign wars. I know we're leading a charge with the war in Yemen, but we can correlate that into the war over in Ukraine and lead with that. We shouldn't be spending 40 plus billion dollars. And now I'm sure it's going to be pushing well over 60 at this point, uh, billions of dollars over to Ukraine when we're facing some of the most economic hardships we face in the United States in decades. So 
we have a great opportunity. I challenge you folks, please, if you uh, you you are in the Liberty world, let's start to uh, plan our, our attack right now and how we want to approach this election season. Um, it definitely is an opportunity for us to differentiate and to really meet people who traditionally wouldn't be involved in the political process. I know we're doing a great job here in the program, reaching to small business owners, entrepreneurs, sales folks, marketing folks, but we also have folks in the Liberty Movement who are doing phenomenal things in building coalitions. Uh, Angela McArdle, new LP chair, has been doing great work in building bridges with the Bitcoin community. Uh, I know we have some folks doing some building bridges with the nuclear community. So, hey, there's a lot of different communities we can reach out to, start to build those relationships, and then we can use that to, to help build up some momentum going into the actual election season when people are paying attention. So it starts now. It requires us to start focusing on things now. So I'm going to challenge you folks to please take that step now. And uh, by the way, if you enjoyed today's episode, you're going to love all the other past episodes we have here at the Brian Nichols Show, oh, over 544, 43 of them uh, here as of today. So go into the archives. You have you know uh, hundreds of shows literally at this point to check through, including a lot of our shows where we focus specifically on sales, marketing as it pertains to the Liberty Movement. Uh, if you're here on the YouTube, please do me a favor. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also hit the little notification bell. And by the way, uh, did you check out? We had an awesome conversation yesterday. We talked about uh, Evolution 2.0. Perry Marshall joined the program. And we talked about a very sometimes controversial topic. I know a lot of folks don't like to enter into the Evolution conversation, but my goodness, Perry does a great job making it not only super easy to understand, but makes it so we can actually engage in a conversation, not two competing sides trying to a uh, good idea uh, each other to death. So I'm really excited to go ahead and share that conversation. I will see you over here on the YouTubes right here below uh, over at that uh, video with Perry. Other than that being said, folks, thank you for joining us on today's episode of The Brian Nichols Show. A little bit different of an episode, yes, for sure, but hopefully you got some value nonetheless. With that being said, it's Brian Nichols signing off. You're on The Brian Nichols Show. We'll see you tomorrow. For listening to The Brian Nichols Show. Find more episodes at briannicholsshow.com.